button and we will go live now. I don't really get the point of that, but that's how it works. It's very helpful. But now we are live, and now people can see us and hear us. Featuring Sabrina the Girlfriend? That's you! That is me. Two Hello years. and welcome everybody. <laughs> Two years in. <laughs> Throwing out your streak head as quickly as possible. <laughs> um, that's okay. Hello everyone, and welcome to Comic Island. Oh, so their desktop audio is very quiet, so they can't hear it at all. Hold on a second. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> a rat fight immediately breaks out while we're doing this. Children are misbehaving in the background. <laughs> Our pets are acting out while we start streaming. That's okay, it gives me a chance to try and get the... Oh, there it goes. Okay, so you guys should be able to hear Injustice at least a little bit now. We actually can't. Um, and this is actually good. So, the rats are screaming. I am working on setup, but thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, we decided to have a little bit of video games on, kind of just in the background. What's this? I don't know what it's up to. Okay, this is all fine. Um... Yeah, whatever. I'm just gonna accept. <laughs> there we go. Shazam theme discussion. Shazam theme game. That's the exact idea. Here we are. Um, it's been a long time since I've played Injustice, so that's probably why I was being weird for a second. Uh, are the pets behaving? They are. They, They've been subtle. The rats are in a recent video. One decided to crawl up into the windowsill while I was filming. I thought that was funny. It's like, oh, oh there he true. goes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we're here to talk about Shazam! Fury of the Gods, but I also thought it might be a chance for you to just share your thoughts on some of the recent comic book movies and uh, how little you've enjoyed them and some <laughs> stuff like that. But also I thought uh, it might be a good opportunity to um, uh, talk for a minute about some questions that you had a while back. Uh, about uh, Shazam and some beats of this character that I, I think uh, you're probably not the only one confused. So I know you said you didn't really want to play, but maybe for a minute I'll hand this over to you while it will just kind of do little tutorial missions. So just hit A, um, and it'll tell you to do stuff. So I'll let you work on that for a second while I tell you this and the audience this. But basically, so Shazam here... Um, Back in the 1930s, <laughs> slash 40s, and Golden Age comics, uh, when a lot of these Superman uh, man stuff was first uh, created, uh, Shazam was part of his own company, and he was actually called Captain Marvel, and he was owned by Fawcett Comics. Yeah, sorry, that mic just might be in your way, but um, yeah, you're just kind of doing combos here, so that's why it's like a very low-pressure situation for you, no rush. Batman will just sit there and take it. <laughs> He's training you. <laughs> um, so Shazam pretty much exists as you have seen him in these movies. Uh, he's like a kid that transforms into an adult superhero, and that's the appeal, I guess. Uh, but after a while, DC Comics bought out Captain Marvel and all the associated characters with him, including Black Adam. Uh, but then because he's got Marvel in his name, and that endlessly confuses people to this day, uh, they named him Shazam, which is something that's always been true of the character. It's always something he says when he turns into a superhero, but he did used to be called uh, Captain Marvel, if that makes sense. That is confusing. Yeah. Is that kind of what they were referencing in the after credits scene where they were like, they said something, a joke about the Avengers, and it's like... Uh, vaguely, yes. I definitely think it was a nod to that. I was thinking about that while I was telling that story. Hey, Tevya, thanks for uh, joining. Tevya uh, in chat points out he still calls him Captain Marvel. It is a point of contention among fans. I've actually embraced it because, as you're well aware, there is a Marvel superhero now called Captain Marvel, so it was always a problem and confusing before. But I understand. Uh, Dylan Searcy, thanks for joining us in chat. I've uh, That's a new name for me, which is cool. We are streaming at a bit of a different time, but I think that's a fun change of pace it lets people in different time zones hop in uh which i'm always aware of because uh i i follow people who are like in europe or even in the mountain time zone and it's just uh 
harder to uh, keep track of their streams, so you know it's it's fun to change it up. Tevia says, "Fun fact: Actually, Elvis's favorite hero was Captain Marvel Jr. That is a fun fact because that's Freddy, um, and uh, we saw the Elvis movie." We did. Oh, yeah. And as you recall, he was a big fan of Captain Marvel Jr. <laughs> and that is Freddy's character in the Shazam movies. That's Captain Marvel Jr. for sure. Um, even the origins are similar. So that led to where we are today. And then The Rock ended up playing Black Adam. Black Adam has always been like Shazam's main villain. But because they wanted to make him a bit of a standalone character, for whatever reason... The Rock apparently struck down or backed out of the idea of him doing a cameo in this movie, so they still haven't appeared in a crossover. And then I did some research because James Gunn is taking over the entire DC Comics, like Kevin Feige is, uh, kind of running Marvel, and has always been doing that. Um, and now, <laughs> uh, that means that it is unclear if Black Adam's ever coming back, if Wonder Woman's ever coming back, if Captain Marvel's ever coming back, and currently for all these characters, it's pretty much a no right now, bordering on, like, either definitely not, and James Gunn has basically indicated he's going to recast everyone, or uh, it's just kind of up in the air, and the fact that neither Black, neither Captain, uh, now I'm calling him Captain Marvel, neither Shazam, Fury of the Gods, nor Black Adam did that well in the box office um, so it's all just kind of a mess right now so we're going to be talking about a lot of that in the stream and it's funny because on the Ant-Man stream I was talking about how I was kind of optimistic that maybe DC was going to turn a corner a little bit and uh, be moving in the right direction and while that still might be true it's really hard to feel that way after uh, stuff like this yeah I mean I guess that's what we were talking about yesterday that like this whole era of DC movies oh, and Marvel movies, everyone was really hyping it up. We were like, okay, you know, we've got all of these things that have been established, all these threads that have been started. And then we went to Ant-Man the other day yeah. and I was pretty disappointed by that. It was just, I was just face palming essentially the whole movie. Oh, you hated it. Yeah. And I don't, I, I don't even that picky. Like I really love a an okay movie and I, I doesn't take a lot to impress me in that way and I was still like wow this was a really rough watch and I was feeling antsy and then this last night for us to see Shazam I mean we're only a week out of when it came out pretty much like a week or two yep. and we were the only people in the theater oh, right like we literally were the only people in the theater for the first 20 minutes someone walked in late these two which is the most disappointing part of the whole movie because then we couldn't talk anymore and yeah, we were having and fun I'm, <laughs> but i'm not even convinced that they actually had paid to go see that i think they might have just been theater hoppers because they came in. Oh, the late, late people definitely. What I think happened there. Because they came there, in with 3D glasses on and yeah. it was not a 3D movie. I think so. what happened there is that group came in together. Those two went off and saw whatever movie they wanted to see and it ended early and then they came and watched the last little bit of this, which was fine. Maybe, but it was funny. <laughs> but it would have, like, the people who came in 25 minutes early could have come from John Wick, which started at like. 7.30 and I, I checked oh, it on the okay. app and so that would have run that. and then they could have They seemed to over. know that other group. They kind of did but either way it's yeah, pretty it's rough okay, that on a Sunday point. night at you know a 9.30 showing a week or two after the movie comes out less than two weeks after the movie comes out it's an empty theater. Yeah. Like that was a whole thing but even then yeah so like I was saying like we've got Batman that just came out which I actually really liked. And I feel like I'm not alone in that. But you saying just came out, that was like almost a year ago now. Yeah, I guess I'm talking about chronologically. Not, like that's, that's true. The, it's, other it's than very Black recent. Adam, that's the last You're not DC wrong about thing that. that I can think about. It's relevant. It's just like, oh, it's it's been a while now. <laughs> like, and even then, they're kind of separating all three of them now, it seems like. We had both thought yeah. that Black Adam was going to be more tied to this, especially because when we saw Batman and I saw the previews for... Um, for Black Adam and Shazam, we saw both the previews at that movie, I was like, they have the same outfit, pretty much, like, different color schemes, but visually, I'm like, how is this going to be different? And it only made sense to me that there would be crossover there. Oh, yeah, go ahead and read that. I'm just trying Let's to power up these generators right now. <laughs> uh, you're, I agree with everything you're saying, though, and it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, Tevia says they liked uh, Fury of the Gods, so... That's good. I And I, I guess we didn't necessarily not like it. I think I was just kind of thrown by a few things that we're going to talk about. I definitely liked it a lot more than I liked we were the gonna, new Ant-Man. Ant-Man, yeah. I felt, was agonizing. Had a bit of a tough time watching the first Shazam, which you introduced me to the other night, and like yeah, you were into that. my attention kind of thing. There was a few times when my phone ended up creeping out there, but um. Okay, I did it. So Deadhouse says Bane. making Batman older than Superman and skipping Dick Grayson puts me off big time. Right, because that's all still relevant. And we saw the trailer for the Flash, and it's doing all that stuff where Ben Affleck's Batman is still a thing, and then there's. Ezra Miller Flash, and then they're also bringing back um, what's his face, Fla uh, Batman from the '80s, Michael Keaton Batman. Right. From, like, yeah, because we saw that preview <laughs> when we were in the theater too. Yeah, and that's all going to be relevant. And then the idea is, I think they're still going to go with Flash is going to be like a reboot for DC, and all this is going to go out the window. Mm. Um. Tevye is saying we're also getting Damian Wayne Robin. And I think that's on the other side of the reboot, though, which is interesting. Uh, and then Dylan seriously was saying, uh, wasn't Dr. Savannah Shazam's first villain? I I read the first Shazam comic pretty recently, and I'm pretty sure both Black Adam and Dr. Savannah are in it. I'd have to double check, but I, I'm pretty sure, which is a neat little fact. And then Black Adam basically died and then didn't come back for like 50 years which I also found really interesting to find out. I was just like, oh, so he's a weird, like, Dr. Savannah is a huge part of Shazam's history and, and Captain Marvel's history. Um, Black Adam, a little less so. He looks interesting in uh, this game. <laughs> yeah, very different look. Because I feel like they were going for a lot of, like, all the kids turned into these early 20s conventionally attractive people. Yeah. And that's, this guy's looking more middle-aged in this game right now. The thing is, the thing about him being a kid that turns into the adult is true. They just don't do a great job of conveying it, which is a shame because they actually do some really interesting things with this character here. Uh, well, but I did like how in, like we were talking about this last night, that I liked how oh, in the movie there we go. they had some nods to the fact that they weren't adults. And even though they had these adult bodies and, you know, powers and everything, like they still did stuff that kids would do. They had this lair that was very much like just a hangout spot and lots of games and stuff in there like it was yeah. very i feel like they did do a I good did job like of that side that. of it i liked how they dressed up all the old sid and villains from the first movie into goofy things that totally they, and as they kids would it... do which also would have infuriated those characters and <laughs> like oh the, definitely the, the demons villains. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it felt it felt good it felt right oh i have the little l logo yeah, and, like, a lot of the dialogue, too, I felt was very kid-like. Yeah, and I'm not against that, uh, but I think it was maybe, like, in that wrong direction of it just being juvenile to the point of, like, I don't know. We didn't get a lot out of the movie, that's for sure. <laughs> I still liked it, though. I think I liked the second one a lot more than I liked the first one. I think there was at least some more stuff going on there and more to keep my attention and less cheesy. That is fair. Based on your reaction, it definitely seems so. This is the first Injustice game, John. I just thought, when we were talking about doing the stream, Sabrina suggested I like pick something that Shazam is in. And uh, this, I actually looked it up just to double check. And this is what I kind of settled on after a few options. And I was like, oh, he's pretty well featured here. Uh, I don't think we're going to get to where he's particularly interesting in the, like, story. <laughs> Um, of this game because that's so far into the story that I think we'd lose sight of that and this is more of just a background review so I'm gonna just cut loose in classic mode for a bit while we keep talking about it. Deadhouse says they haven't seen the new one uh, heard they went a bit overboard with the kitty jokes what do you think? I think so I think you're right yeah. it gets right into what you're saying about how they made it kitty and that while that works for getting like certain things appealed even I don't know, but we've been talking I don't know about if it was that. even kitty jokes, it's just bad jokes. Like, I'm thinking yeah. of... Like, I laughed the first time when they brought out the violin that burns that they don't know what it does. And then when they brought it up, I was like, well, it is Chekhov's, like, burning violin, which I get, but I just wasn't enjoying stuff like that at all. But we've kind of noticed that between the two franchises, too. Like, even in that Guardians of the Galaxy 2 trailer, there's all that 
kind of cringy true. banter that's happening and we're like does this actually add anything i think i'd personally prefer some action scenes or even just clever dialogue when it does come up but it feels like they're trying to press all these witty one-liners that actually aren't making anybody laugh yeah i did enjoy i sorry i just have to appreciate in between rounds i turned back into billy for a second just to taunt my opponent that he's oh that's fun fighting a child <laughs> um I agree with, yeah, I, like it's just a shame because I thought the first movie was strong in even just its identity of having this foster kids and stuff, and I liked that. Did you find out if Mary Marvel was recast by any chance when you were looking that stuff up? Ooh. Do you want to, it's not that important to me, but I'm pretty sure she looked different and I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere. Well, I kicked dust shows, but but that's the first one. So or that's the first fight in this little arcade thing. So it's only gonna get harder from here. Yeah, it doesn't really say. I haven't found anything. Okay, well I can also just Google that. Um, I think too that the movie was good for a lot of representation. Like, Freddy's disabled. Oh, she but, was recast. But other than the bullies, oh there you go. Other than the bullies making a point of you know coming after him for that which i think is relevant for a disabled character like yeah, other kids do sadly bully disabled kids so i thought that was good because it wasn't this massive part of his character and they didn't act like him being a superhero was more liberating than it was for anybody else because of that i don't think i thought that was good like fat representation with pedro but he felt barely in the movie you're right, yeah. He's in like two or... Th well, cause, except for they do transform him near the end, and he is Pedro for a lot of that ending stuff, but he just doesn't do mm -hmm. anything. It's I did Batman. kind of have a... I guess when we talk about representation, though, I like I love that Pedro was fat, but then they made all of the characters con conventionally attractive and thin when they're adults. Like, I would have loved to see Pedro be an that adult. That would have been fun, and there's precedent for that in the Captain Marvel universe, too. Yeah. Like you could have, have a tubby guy with those powers and they totally there's a character like, design they could have used that like now that you mentioned it's like oh yeah they 100 percent could have done that when they had the dragon there's like this tiger thing that shazam's done before that i thought they were going for and i was so excited because if a crazy potentially talking tiger like showed up in this movie i um that's a lot more original and fun than a dragon um no that would have been good like yeah. And I think that, like, the dad is attractive in the movie to me, and he's a bigger dude. So I'm like, you could have still had the person be attractive, but also be a bigger person, and not everybody just being super fit and also, like, just erasing that, you know? That's true. And, of course, Pedro's queer, too, which we, like, he came out as gay, and yeah. everyone's like, oh, yeah, whatever, it kind of... Uh, once again, easy to edit out. <laughs> yeah, you're right, very easy to edit out. I wonder how people are going to feel about that too because it kind of is oh, like just a throw it in him. representation but... i got him i'm finishing him oh there he goes i'm using the lightning sorry batman that kind of a little underwhelming actually jillian starts he's saying they weren't super thin uh, that's fair but uh i definitely think they fit the conventional attractive things that Rita's referring to there um Tevi is saying, I'm wondering how you feel about her being Billy Bats and Captain Marvel's biological sister in the comics. Oh, is that new? Because I didn't know that. But I also only know so much about Shazam. I know a lot more about Black Adam. Tevi saying it honestly doesn't bother him. Yeah, I don't either. It's not really... I don't think it fits with what's established in the like movies. And obviously that's not what Tevi is saying. Uh, I like them better as like unrelated foster kids that each kind of have their own version of that experience like the younger ones are a little more innocent to that system and less jaded uh versus like billy and freddie who have kind of seen things and it like you get that impression mm. do you know what i'm saying yeah i actually like that side of their character but i characters but i think it's underdone like billy the kid billy barely felt in this it, that was honestly the weirdest part to me and I was thinking about it of like this is another COVID movie where you have some actors who just weren't as available or as interested as others so like depend different versions of each character showed up more than others so um, what's the little girl's name Dana or Daria? Uh, Darla 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 is a little bit of both 
Pedro definitely leans more to well Pedro just isn't a huge character in this movie um but uh, yeah like other than him being gay we didn't really get yeah. a ton of who kid, he is otherwise kid Freddy we see way more of than anyone which yeah. I thought was weird older Billy we is uh the uh like is a big thing obviously like that's our main character. He's the main character, yeah. Uh, I just find it a very odd mix <laughs> of uh, like what characters are used where, and the answer I can only really think of is this is a COVID movie. This is a, a movie where different actors are available for different amount of times. The first Shazam movie actually did have a lot of those compromises in place. Um, so I just... It's just another movie like Ant-Man 3 where we had to compromise away a lot <laughs> right. and it's getting a little frustrating hopefully we'll kind of be out of that phase i think guardians seems like an uncompromised movie where they were able to kind of just film it and make it the way they wanted to but that could just be wishful thinking at this point <laughs> I, I, I hope so like i james like gunn has saying, a pretty good handle on these things usually so i'm optimistic i'm really hoping that they're not just rushing through this stuff because there's such a jam-packed year this year with everything coming out and this whole new era happening and I think that Ant-Man to me felt really rushed and they're just kind of like yeah. put the movie out and I'm like where is the substance where is the actual plot here like we learned a little bit about essentially what the mom was doing I think that's a great way of putting it and for that's both pretty of much all movies. we got like, like put the movie out that's the mentality I like Shazam a lot better. I feel like it it's, actually oh, yeah. did do something it's for the a continuity. Lot, but I agree, and it was an easier movie to get through. But I think they both are, like, um, I don't know. Just slap it together. Like, where yeah. was the writing in it? You know, because we've had some really amazing and, and yeah, like, once again, screenwriting, and it just wasn't Oh, yeah, wasn't no, I was going to say, like, once again, like, we, uh, we get... The cheapest thing to do is have a good script. <laughs> and it's amazing how often that's the thing I find most lacking. Yeah, well, and I kind of struggled at the beginning of Shazam, the three sisters. You know, they're yeah. saying him and this and oh, this and man, this. Oh, man, that was disappointing. They're referencing a million things. And I think I just would have rather had this scene where we're introducing everything and then I feel like I'm caught up to speed because I don't yeah. love introducing these concepts that are supposed to give this idea of mystery and then I'm just sitting there like, so are we going to see these things because I don't really understand how this is all coming together. Maybe I'm alone in being lost there, but... I no, was just kind I, of not understanding. While I was on. watching the movie, I was like, I get what we're going for here with the broken staff and stuff, but I definitely think for people, and you had the advantage of seeing these movies at least close to each other. Mm -hmm. For people where it's like two or however many years apart, I think it's more than two, even though they said it was only two years. <laughs> um, yeah, the whole bit with Atlas's daughters at the beginning, I think it would have been nice. They would have been be so cool. Obvious. I I love those. Like all all three actors, I thought had a lot of potential. Like obviously Lucy Liu and Helen Mirren are a lot of in, are, are good performers, <laughs> uh, who are in a lot of things. I don't know who the other person is, but all three were entertaining and they had interesting powers. Rachel Ziegler. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay, I've heard that name before. Mm -hmm. she like, I look, recognized her. She looked familiar. And mm -hmm. she, all, all three, I think, were interesting performers, and their powers could have been used interestingly. They weren't, but, like... Yeah. And, like, it could have been a pretty fun... Uh, Tevye is saying they're from Greek mythology. They are. Um, and I recognize that. Uh, that, I don't know, you're allowed to change that stuff, though. And, like, uh, there's, there's a way to work with that. And it's not even like they were bad... Well, they, I don't know. I thought they were good villains. Tevye is saying they're good villains, and I thought so, too. Okay. I think I think they were pretty good. I think the <laughs> the whole fight on the side of Shazam and everything was a little bit simplistic, almost. Like, especially, I don't know. I think I was disappointed by the end mm -hmm. where, you know, Shazam is just brought back. And there's no consequences for our actions. I think there needed to be a little bit of consequence, but with him dying and then not actually oh, yeah. dying... That just felt like, oh, we can do whatever we want. Like, maybe one of them should have died. They made fun that of that it, in, you know? in that uh, pitch meeting thing. It wasn't something that... Uh, I knew it was coming, so I guess that's why it didn't bother me much. But you got you and anyone else who's been complaining about that are right in that, like... We need to have consequences for our yeah. actions and here. It shouldn't There's even no be... point if we can have Wonder Woman just swoop yeah. in and go, actually, just kidding, that's not a thing. I regret the use of the word complaint, even, because it's not even, like... Uh, like it's not a meaningful complaint. It's it's a real problem with the movie. There's no consequences to it. Um, it, it that's a critique. <laughs> it's a better word for it. Because mm -hmm. um, you guys are right when like when you're saying that that's. 
But even the complexity of how they ended up taking the Atlas sisters down to, or at least the one that was left, Calypso. Yeah. Um, because they made that whole point that you know they've got these amazing powers. That's something these I like. Gods. That oh. was cool. But well, then... and I, I also just liked how Helen Mirren was an, an unreasonable person. Mm-hmm. That was like an she wasn't just single-minded. I liked that there was there was little, some character uh, development with Calypso too. Her little Lucy lunch Blue. date with Shazam was nice. That was funny. But you're right in that like the ending with her and Lucy or with Lucy Liu, I should say, and Shazam was very underwhelming. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, Dylan Cersei said. Cersei? I'm not sure how he is, is it? Uh, D- Rachel Ziegler was in the West Side Story and Lucy Liu was in Fury of the Gods. That's funny. Um, oh, okay. Oh, is it not? Oh, okay. Maybe we have that mixed up or something. But either way, he might just be saying that that's where we, like... That's where we recognize her from? Yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't actually seen that, but... Well, I, they made that whole point that, okay, so they have these powers of the gods, yeah. but the one power that they made a point of saying was that Shazam has super speed and they don't. And I feel like there were so many times where they're right there, the staff oh, no. is right there, and it's we could have just flash swooped syndrome. in and gotten it. <laughs> yeah, and I guess that's part of it if you're going to have that power. That's something the Flash show it. is uh, infamous for, unfortunately. Oh, no. <laughs> but um, even then, that was just... Yeah, it kept, it kept going like that. I felt like there was a lot of time where we were just kind of standing around or we're wasting our time or... You know, Lucy Liu is off talking to her sister who's sitting there dying and she's like, I'm not taking down this big dome. And we're wasting our yeah. time having this moment explaining, handing it to the audience that, you know, I've realized that family really means a lot and whatever. When we probably could have ended it all right then and oh, there. Oh, man, that's a part that I was I literally scoffed at in theater. I don't know if you heard me. When <laughs> Freddie was like uh, just saying to... Um, it's Billy? Like, no, no, it was to that, uh, like, Axis girl that... I think that's her name, right? That she can spin thing people on, like on their axis, kind of. Well, maybe I mean her name's Anthea, but. Oh, Anthea's her. Yes, that's actually her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Anna. Um, but she had a superhero or supervillain yeah. name, anyways. Uh, and he's saying to her, "Oh, you taught me that. <laughs> like that family's important and stuff." And it's like, when they've been, they had their initial scene meeting each other. Yeah. Uh, with the bullies, uh, the cafeteria scene, and then they maybe briefly taught around that with the ridiculous thing with Freddy and the wizard where he kept getting the name wrong which gets into that thing you were saying about painful comedic on the nose dialogue Mm -hmm. and that I liked the wizard at first I thought he was really funny and entertaining Mm -hmm. but after a while that got old and then when he's in his cool man outfit which looked good Um, he did look good very modern very classy uh, but those jokes by the end I was just sick of it Uh, John yeah, sorry, I'm being attacked by Harley Quinn, which you'd think would be an easy match in these games, but uh, they they actually did create a plot point in these stories that there are like these Kryptonian pills that the much much weaker regular people like Harley Quinn can stand up to a magic powered god like Shazam, and be a realistic threat. Oh, interesting. It's contrived, but for a fighting game, it's you know it was more than enough. We're also fighting at Wayne Manor, which is a fun little detail. Maybe I'll continue your thought about cringy yeah. dialogue. So one part of the movie that I really I'm liked so at first like was the it. unicorn bit with Darla. Oh, yeah. So I thought it was a, probably a very I'm intentional choice. I liked that... it at first. and then, Oh, and then even when the, the way they introduced it with the pen being like, the king of beasts are what all these monsters are afraid of. And it's like just casually telling them about unicorns and stuff. Yeah, I... and they did mention those unicorns before when she was having the unicorns fight Genghis Khan. Do you remember that? Oh, right. Okay. So we introduced the Chekhov's unicorns there. Uni- so, they, so whoever wrote this script definitely knows about setup and payoff. Payoff, absolutely. <laughs> and so I liked it. I thought that was cool. You know, she knew exactly where to look for it to be a cave. It was the parking garage. I think that, you know, it was a very intentional choice that the unicorns were black and that it was Darla's bit that she had there. I thought yeah. the Skittles were funny. But right, you pointed that out, and I definitely agree that it was like uh, it was a thing. <laughs> yeah, because we, you know, traditionally, especially in fine art, we conceptualize uh, unicorns as white, but I, I'm really glad that they were black. I'm um, curious about John Campion. But that was definitely cringy. It was like a were, little check mark by his name, sorry. <laughs> but they were, it was definitely cringy, the dialogue, after we hammered it into the ground like three or four times that there's these Skittles and Taste the Rainbow and the whole bit. 
I think it was a one and done joke and they just kind of keep rehashing things. Like there's these callbacks and I think callback jokes can be funny, but not sequentially. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. They overdid it. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just reading the John Campia thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt there, but uh, he uh, was saying that a lot of movies often overlook certain powers characters have for the sake of a plot device. It's frustrating, but I'll do it. That's true, mm -hmm. but I would point out, like, uh, they do a good job at um, masking it in some movies more than others. Because even, like, a Batman movie, that will be true to an extent, um, especially something like the Nolan movies. But Nolan was very good at hiding that and making you not really care, even after someone points it out to you or something like that. And it was just a lot more obvious in something like this or <laughs> in some of the lesser episodes of the flash so um someone's quoting modok in chat oh modok uh i didn't hate that part actually that was kind of funny it, i liked modok in uh he was great at first Quantumania. <laughs> Yeah, but maybe even that's another cringy dialogue moment. Because what, what did somebody say? You just don't have to be a dick or something? And then suddenly he just that's is where, no longer that's, a dick? That's, that was his character arc. Uh, Cassie said that to him at the middle of that big frustrating battle. It would have been nice if they had dropped something a little earlier. Like maybe he lets them go at one point or, you know, he's starting to have a change of heart. It did kind of feel very all at once. And then it's like, oh, well, he's going to save the day now all at once. And... There was nothing really leading to that. He was just evil, and then he wasn't. Um, yeah. Tevia was asking how I'd feel about Mary Marvel being in the Injustice universe for games, and I think that'd be uh, fine. I don't know if she's in the Injustice comics, for one thing. Uh, she would be a good, uh, like, the thing is, it's like, well, okay, we have Black Adam, and we have Shazam, so how do you make her, like, a different playable character? Which I'm not even saying can't be done, but that would be what I would challenge NetherRealm Studios to do <laughs> with the character. Um, <laughs> Dylan's wondering if uh, George Tarl Tarl Tarleton would be in the MCU as the next MODOK. I mean, the thing about that is, like, would they do another MODOK right away? Like, I, that's part of where I get frustrated with this character. Um, also, I lost as Shazam against Harley Quinn, so I'm calling in reinforcements. Oh, no. I'm bringing in Black Adam. <laughs> who did not appear who in did, Shazam Who declined two. to appear in Shazam 2, because apparently uh, Zachary Levi was saying that on Instagram or something, that like Dwayne Johnson personally killed that from happening. <laughs> But what's the point? He went. He spent so much time being like, "Oh, we gotta make Black Adam happen. We gotta make this happen." Oh, he wants. Uh, well, so, uh, this is like rumor mill that I've heard, but and I'm not sure if it's true. But it is apparently he wants Black Adam just to fight Superman, and the fact that that probably yeah. isn't gonna happen now is uh, interesting to say the least. Because apparently Cavill's like done as Superman. Oh, or, seriously? Yeah, like, and not even really by, by choice necessarily. It's just, I'm pretty sure James Gunn, like, wants a clean slate after Flash. Just, it's such a mess at this point, is what I'm well, guessing. Yeah. I liked the Wonder Woman cameos, to be honest. I thought it was kind of funny. The, the it dream. was good that they Once set they it up with a dream. Once they revealed that weird thing was a dream, and then they actually had her show up at the end, I was like, you know, that's pretty good. Uh, people were saying it's fake, but apparently it was a very real appearance with Gal Gadot. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, right. I did like that, especially because they set it up, but it would have been a lot more satisfying, I think, to have Black Adam show up. So far, he's doing a lot better in this. Oh, good. There you she go. kicked my butt as Shazam. She's reflecting on a few Well, I just mean at the end of the movie, we were oh, like, I well, know. no, there's still a god hanging around, and she's I'm a just... demigod, so if they're going to say a god, it would have been nice to have it actually be a full god, a.k.a. Yeah, Black you pointed Adam. that out last night, and I was like, oh, you're right. That would have been a really cool moment. Mm -hmm. And it would all have been nicely like tied together. Um, especially because I'm pretty sure we saw the wizard in Black Adam for a second. Like, when they were showing the origins of Black Adam, I'm pretty sure oh, that was Oh, yeah, the he wizard. might have showed up at some point. Yeah. And that it's... would make sense. The fact but, like, that, why keep them so separate over two movies that come out in such I was such about to say, the fact that Shazam succession. didn't show up in that movie should have been telling... Like, they didn't just do that by accident. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that was hoping those little orbs would have done more damage, but okay. How dare yeah, you? Yeah, like, you she really broke can't, my throw. You really can't convince him to show up for a two-second cameo? 
I, you know, it, that's, it's not about the inconvenience there. That's like a, a choice. <laughs> I think it was probably a bit detrimental to the whole continuity of everything, in yeah. my opinion. It would have been good to have some, you've got two characters in the same outfit with very similar powers. The Justice the Society time. reference was like specifically to, uh, like a reference to the Black Adam movie, but uh, apparently. Was it like setting it up? for something kind no of it's thing? just that's who those justice like they were justice society characters that showed up in the black adam movie not justice league and that's Ew. that's the extent of that connection but apparently it was all characters from those movies were like the kibosh was put on them oh which is interesting hmm. um yeah thank you for reading chat by the way i haven't really been able to distract well, it because okay. i have ridiculous ai stuff like this going on He's just running around using all his powers. Like, stop it. You're being rude. I just want to talk about your terrible movie, Shazam. Oh, it's interesting they were already calling him Shazam when this movie came out, or this game came out, because this game's getting pretty old. You can kind of see it even, even in the art direction of this. Like, it's just all right. <laughs> hmm. Let's see. We're wondering oh how you God, feel about... Out. Shazam 2 not doing well in the theater. Uh, I will say it's like shockingly bad how its box office is doing. It did just over like a hundred million dollars on its first weekend and that's crazy low. Even by like pre whatever current era you want to call theater movies where like Black Adam can make 300 million dollars and still be considered like a pretty serious underperformance mm. uh, 100 million is low for a big budget movie like this like 20 years ago that would have been pretty low so that like it's not even like it's bad it's like shockingly bad yeah, I don't think it deserves to be getting the, as bad a rap as it is. Like, with a 51% on Rotten Tomatoes when we were going into it, I was expecting to be gouging my eyes out by the end of it, but I actually was entertained. I didn't hate it. I, yeah. I had fun. I liked it a lot better than the first one. So I just sad that it's not really getting it, but maybe with, you know... It has a lot of potential, and I think the foster kids are really interesting as a thing. But I uh, guess, like, if Black Adam's not going to be in it, and we're trying to do this whole Black Adam Superman thing, then how does that... It doesn't really help Shazam get tied into the greater picture at all. So then it's like, do I even have to see this to understand what's going on with DC? Maybe not, if they're not going to make any effort to include it. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, <laughs> and that's a nice way of putting it. Dylan was asking about art direction. I'm pretty sure I made a, re a reference to this game's art direction being a little out of date. And uh, I, that's why I'm pulling on character selection, because I was thinking that even when we were on character select and looking at, like, okay, here's Killer Frost, here's Ares, um, the look of Black Adam, especially his regime look and Shazam's regime look. These are all, like, the choices that they make in these costumes and how they look is just very, too, like, early 2000s is all I can really say. Yeah. It's not even terrible. Like, like a Wonder Woman here. Um, they all just have a certain look to them. It's also just part of the graphics, and this is also Gen 6 graphics or whatever, like the Wii PS3 era graphics, where they all have a certain look to them that is starting to be something I'm more and more identifying just coming back to these games. It's not even bad. It's just like it's it's of a certain time period, and there's no way if they brought the game out now it would look like this. <laughs> um, that's all I meant by that, but I think it's a good question. It was like, yeah, just vaguely referred to that. Then I was just saying, yeah, they're going to promote what they got in the pipeline because they paid for it, but Gunn wants to get Superman Legacy and forget all that. Get to, like, super the Superman Legacy and forget all this. That's what I think. Mm. I agree. I think that's pretty much the thought of, like, what James Gunn wants currently. And then Tevye is saying, I blame James Gunn rebooting the universe. Which is true, but it's also, like, this messy universe where like, you have a mix of actors' egos getting in the way, and it's not just Dwayne Johnson, that's Ben Affleck, a few yeah. other people, even Margot Robbie, who I think, at least in that case, advocated for her character. She also had a huge hand in what movies that character was showing up in and what decisions were made along those lines that weren't necessarily the best for the DCEU. Um, and, and all of these things, and then it's not, I don't want to just blame the actors, because way more than that, it's all the executive meddling and all the decisions made along the way 
the whole Zack Snyder debacle with Justice League and um, well especially that more than anything else just bogs it all down and uh, that creates a like you were saying a difficult atmosphere to people to be invested in and to want mm-hmm. to be able to do that oh right here why don't you read the most recent thing that dead has said in chat <laughs> and ezra miller went right off the rails yes they did very um, yeah we were wondering how they're gonna handle that because that was another trailer that oh, we saw while the movie was I, getting I, ready i knew yeah so you were wondering and you're right about when you're saying wondering like we were curious for sure but i knew they were not they were already very clear they couldn't abandon the Flash like they did with the Batgirl movie because right. they had spent too much money on the Flash movie. Mm. Um, and it didn't look terrible. It didn't I was look excited terrible. By, about the. It's gonna be a weird watch, but it did not look terrible. <laughs> yeah, with how we feel about the actor, and then. Yeah, and even just knowing that it's all gonna be so inconsequential, like there's no way we're ever gonna see Ezra Miller again. As the Flash, yeah, not not for that they've done. not for this decade. <laughs> you know, maybe like you're saying, they could they can redeem themselves down the road, or whatever. You could have a big comeback story, and, and years later, maybe. But it would be something like Michael Keaton coming back to Gotta the role. Gotta have some reparations first. Decades later, yeah, like it's a long road to that before mm-hmm. like people are going to be in a position where they'd be comfortable with such a thing, and also. It's not like Michael Keaton, where you have all these fans being like, yeah, he's coming back to play Batman. I don't think people are going to be clamoring for Ezra Miller to be returning to these roles. No. Um, not ever for all the shenanigans they've done. Tevia, thanks for joining us, but he's heading off to bed. I don't think we're going to be on much longer anyway. No, so I feel just... like we've hit a lot of the points we wanted to talk about. Yeah. Um, but thank well, you for joining, absolutely. Yeah, and it's always nice having the, the chatty people in yep, chat. Some like, banter, giving us absolutely. <laughs> some stuff. Um, Dylan was also saying Namor is a better anti-hero than Black Adam and it's like yeah yeah good for Marvel for managing to snake them with like the one good in universe movie like we really uncritically enjoyed last year which was Wakanda Forever yes because Batman was good but it's definitely a side thing I I don't think like it's just it's own project it's not in universe it's Mm -hmm. not supposed you know it's supposed to be it's own thing and it was great (laughs) Um, honestly like looking back on it now we were struggling to get through it because we like i had to go to the bathroom so badly and it was just a long movie not but, helped yeah we both were on the brink of peeing our pants not yeah, helped but by the flood a, scene at the end yeah <laughs> and also the three different endings that could have been yeah but it's a good movie it's one of those things like if we watched it at home we wouldn't have had any problems with true it. well and now watching the films that we've got currently i feel like we were spoiled back then so yeah god it, it does feel that way but it's best to also been this rough rung of like thor then, like, which I didn't really hate as much as I think a lot of people did either. That's true. Which is why I was so upset by Ant Man because I'm and like, I think also everybody why... said Thor was bad and I didn't think it was bad, but Ant Man was like, yeah, cry. Oh, you saw bad. It. You saw what we all saw from the first. No, but I think also like as much as you liked Thor, it also deeply bothered you when we got to that ending scene with Eternity and the whole yeah, wish thing. Yeah, there was a whole, that, yeah. that Because you liked it, I think that hit a lot harder for you of, like, that disappointment. And Totally. You're just like, okay, why are characters making the decisions they are? It's a lot more compelling when characters are making the same decisions you would make and it still doesn't quite go right, but when they're making the wrong decision, you're like, well, I'm not invested in this now. Yeah. Which is almost how I felt at the end of Shazam a little bit. <laughs> where I'm like, okay, none of this is really how I would have gone about it or makes even sense. It's not like yeah. there's this clever, oh, we can use this thing from earlier to save us. It just became like, oh, oh well, you know, he's realizing it absorbs this everything and then it's going to explode and he's going to die, but he's not really going to die. And I have Here's something I liked about the movie. Mm. I liked, and this happened in two completely separate scenes at the beginning and end of the movie with the bridge and then later when the magical beasts are rampaging around and stuff. Uh, in both cases, the crowd, like the random extras running around and doing stuff, all had their own like personalities and stuff. Yes. So yeah. the nurse, like at the beginning in the car, but even just like there's one guy randomly dodging like cracks and stuff, and other people are just panicking and freezing up. I liked that because that felt so much more realistic than your average 
violent superhero scene. Right, um, you just have these helpless like, bystanders. But there's also so. variety. There's people who are smart, people who are dumb, people mm-hmm. who just are freaking out because they've never experienced anything like that in their lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the extras also had a better sense of where the effects are. So like where the crack in the bridge is happening, so where you're avoiding and you're trying not to die. Um, and same thing with like the seeds growing and stuff like that. Or the one lady who almost got impaled by the tree branches. Like those extras really understood right. what was where. Well, then we had that guy and come that back. That was good. I liked that that one oh, yeah. guy was calling Shazam out. That he's at his lunch thing. And he goes, you know, what are you actually doing to do this? Yeah. To to make this right and to fix this. I like that. And then he came back during that last scene when then um, yep. Calypso shows up on the dragon. And they're like, well, we're getting out of here. But I liked that. I thought it was very humanizing. Um, that stuff worked well. There there was even a couple cameos they did using that stuff. Uh, the actual director shows up at one point and gets that was murdered. Funny. Yeah. I, I've <laughs> always contended if I ever get the honor of like writing one of these things or being involved in one of these big projects, I would love to be murdered as an extra in one of them. That's hilarious. If I were like, I don't think I really want to be like a superhero movie director, but sounds like a, a horrible, horrible job in existence. <laughs> But if I were, I would definitely opt for, I want to always have like an Alfred Hitchcock style series of appearances or like what Stan Lee does. But I always die. Like I'm always yep. one of the hapless victims that just gets randomly absorbed by like a wave of lightning or whatever. Don't even give me any lines, just kill me. No, it doesn't have to be a glorious death or anything like nope. that. Actually, the less glorious, the better. <laughs> um, oh, uh, Dylan has another good example. The tour guide at the museum in the first scene. Yes. Very, very, very small role, very memorable character and stuff. I loved him. And that is exactly the energy that people who work in museums have or should have. I think it was good. And he was like, just that, that stuff worked really well. That That's an example of how like David Sandberg as a director kind of enhanced the movie. But I think, and that's what I was saying earlier of like, it's a COVID movie. He had to compromise away the core of the movie of like what characters are involved when and the story and that stuff got compromised. But the actual direction of it was pretty good. And the visuals to me, you know, Lucy Liu riding on a dragon. I can't defend that. That looked cheap as hell. But uh, a lot of them did look good. And, and a lot of the shots or even the design of the layer, like you were saying, the fact that they called it their layer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a fun callback to the first movie because they were looking for a house at one point. Yep, a layer. <laughs> the layer. Um, and, uh, and even how they turned the prison cell in the layer into a timeout. And even the way that timeout cell was... Uh, built or mm-hmm. like or the way they created that set made me think oh no they these kids have already labeled that the timeout room <laughs> and that's just where they put her yeah. but that's something they've already done in the past to this place and then the one kid just took to like exploring the doors because that's something I love I would that do. the little and he's got, notes like, on the doors were yeah, hilarious yeah he's got his like weird system of filing them and stuff that, that was, was actually funny I would take that over the the supposed to be the supposed to be funny dialogue that we had. Yeah. That was not funny. <laughs> Denhouse was calling Thor a crime against humanity, which I... Eh. You know, it's funny. Like I, I can understand how people would feel I didn't like come out of it hating it, but the more I like talked to people online when I did my stream and the more I thought about it, the less I liked that movie and stuff. And I didn't love it coming out of it. Like, I don't... I don't think I've We've ever... had some really good Avengers movies, so I think when you're used to yeah. that level of quality, Thor and the newest Ant-Man and everything else just is falling flat. Mm-hmm. Deadhouse is saying superhero movie director would be a hard job, so much history and baggage. I agree. I uh... Luckily, you're aware of that history, but when even it, when then, it's even it's saying the history, mind. it's like the the industry too, and like right. weird. He, like he's what he's saying there is layered and, and he's not even wrong and even like when you deal with that history it boxes you in sometimes in weird ways or it's just something you know is going to be a problem going forward or you have to deal with like like loaded issues such as costumes and stuff and, and I I assume you're getting at all of that uh, well it's some ruckus going on over the there. The creatures are creating a ruckus. That stuff doesn't uh, show up on mic as much as I think, though. So no, you, good. you guys might not hear that, but um, uh, and uh, yeah, and then the baggage. I agree. Is just like you're just constantly dealing with David F. Sandberg, the director of this movie, like Shazam Two and One. 
uh, is actually very transparent about it, and it's super interesting hearing about the compromise. And I tried to point it out to you when we were watching the first Shazam of like, so Darla's not in this scene because she when they this was one of the first right, scenes. Right, yeah, yeah, she's not outside. And it's late in the movie, but it's one of the first scenes they actually filmed. So she's not outside, she's back inside still doing her shoes, and they did this weird little thing just to accommodate the fact that she wasn't available for that scene mm. and i find that stuff so interesting but that's when they were doing all the exterior shots early on so right. she just and like just weird intricate stuff like that you wouldn't think of that has to be compromised away and then so when i was saying earlier about yeah that casting represented a lot of compromise to me that's what i think and and, and especially the compromise in the sense of like this actor like the kid freddie maybe he wanted more screen time so the older freddie had to take a back seat and he didn't have as much clout or the right agent to enforce that and just these weird politics uh mm. one thing i was thinking about is like that's where like phil lord and christopher miller always work together the russo brothers always work together and they did infinity war and endgame and captain america winter soldier and civil war mm. um so they have a very good track record to them and it does seem the effect of having two people in the room and maybe having one work when the other needs a break or having multiple people that can answer questions at once mm. really seems to go a long way in making the job less of a stressful experience and right. the, the result is better too like it seems to be more than one creator is needed for a big giant project like this as long as they are in unison on certain things and how they view things and those two that i like that those two pairs that i mentioned are a good example of that it's not the only one but you need that team and sometimes these directors kind of sit on like they're used to doing something more mid-budget or low budget where it can just be them and that doesn't always work when you have the sprawling complicated especially shazam which is a very complicated superhero story to tell because you have a family of superhero kids which isn't right yeah and they didn't have to do that that shazam isn't always that in the comics but if you're gonna do that promise then you're promising something pretty intricate and something that really needs a deft hand in making the film and i don't know if we got that mm. um yeah, and that's what Dead House is saying. There's so many versions of the characters. You're always going to have... You're always going to upset people because you don't put their version on screen. And I think that's part of adaptation is that compromise and knowing what works and what doesn't, what to keep and what not to keep. Mm. And the the best people at it, the ones who did like Endgame and stuff like that, took excellent, brilliant parts of uh, stuff from the comics like Captain America wielding me all near... Um, right. Then also wiping out all the universe with a snap of his fingers and then refined it and added in all these little details and made all these little changes and probably pissed off a lot of fans in doing so, but made a film that sold for like billions of dollars, whereas Shazam will be lucky to break a quarter of that. <laughs> um, and that's... I think that's the lesson to take away from all of this. That's like that. Someone was asking earlier really what I thought about the box office and stuff, and mm. that's that's kind of a big takeaway of mine. <laughs> um, Dylan was saying like Gore the God Butcher in reference to what we talked about, but I think that was. I don't know if anyone was happy with how he was depicted uh, and stuff. That was way over compromised from the comic book version that people want, and also. In that case, there's really only one comic book version of that character, so how do you screw that up so badly? <laughs> um, and that's a good example of where adaptation just flat out failed. Uh, and I get that you enjoyed Thor a little more than I did, but I think you can agree that the God Butcher stuff was underplayed. To say yeah, the least. <laughs> he was kind of a weird character. Like, there's something to that, st that character in that story, but mm -hmm. it definitely didn't feel delivered in that movie. I think I wanted to feel like I wanted to cheer for him more than I did. Yeah, or uh, he should have been more of a terrifying presence, which he was a little bit mm -hmm. in that black and white scene. I just wanted more of that. I wanted him to actually butcher gods, <laughs> which someone pointed out to me and I haven't been able to get out of my yeah, head. Yeah, do something really nice and gruesome. He know? didn't actually do that. He never really... No. Came. I thought he was going to for sure storm that place with the gods. We were lucky to see That would have been iconic. You yeah. slit in throats. Maybe there's some blood flowing around. Like, that would have been great. That would have been true butchering, but you're just killing them. You're not actually butchering anybody. We Deliver never... some heads to Zeus, maybe. Yeah. 
So the heads idea is a good one because then we're not destroying this cool new god's place we just introduced, which mm-hmm. is a habit Marvel used to have. <laughs> um, Here's this cool place. Let's ruin it. Yeah, they did that with Wakanda almost. <laughs> um, they did that with a few places like Nowhere and stuff. Uh, but they are luckily kind of learned their lesson. They're rebuilding Nowhere. They fixed a lot of the Wakanda issues with the whole plant thing and because mm. they could remake it now. They uh, what's her face figured it out and she became Black Panther. So they're not. Otherwise, they implied that. T'Challa was going to be the last ever Black Panther and then Chadwick Boseman died (laughs) and these are the kinds of reckless decision making Marvel needs to be more careful about going forward (laughs) Um, completely unrelated note but was it necessary that they had Freddy who is like at most maybe 13 or something Oh God! I can't believe we haven't talked about 6,000 years old and then they did that and we're just cool with that they, and then they made a joke about it because they already had a bunch of kind of uncomfortable jokes with Billy and Wonder Woman. At least he's shortly turning 18 and they made that clear. And she's thing. just an adult and that's, you know, yeah. whatever. But like, No, she's ancient too. Oh, oh yeah, I guess she is, yeah. Well, not ancient, but she's at least over 100 years old. Mm-hmm. Freddy, but then Anthea is 6,000 years so old. So I'm saying Freddie's also almost 18. Yeah, they're only like two months apart. But like, something. you know, the kiss happens, the parents are standing there, the dad addresses it and goes... You know, this isn't, you know, this is feels a little weird. And I'm like, okay, we can leave this here. But now she's over for dinner, and we're holding hands, and they're dating. Yeah. And I'm like, this has now gotten very weird, and I'm not the, sure why we're doing this. The thing people bring up, out, uh, up in these situations all the time, and, sorry, I just love this. Uh, all, uh, but uh, it's like, they, they talk about what would happen if the genders were reversed. And uh, I don't love that comparison always, but in this case, I think it's very apt of like, well, it even like and like people are saying they're almost turning eighteen and stuff. Like it's not the end of the world, but it's very uncomfortable, and it would have been, I think, even more. I don't uncomfortable. know that it added anything. I think we could have just gone so. like, you know what? Now that you know I'm I'm six thousand years old, you're cute, but we'll leave it there. Like I, you know, we could have had our little smoocheroo and or then left just it. make them eighteen. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> There's no reason that couldn't have been the case, especially because. Those actors are definitely 18 by now. <laughs> right, but I'm just, I was just uncomfortable. It was just uncomfy. I think and that's I don't fair. Think that it and really you're not added. the only one who's mentioned that. But it didn't add anything either. It's not like yeah. there's this, there's a reason for them to be dating or something. Like, we're just, mm-hmm. it's just weird now. Dylan points out in the comic score was so powerful that three Thors had to take him down from, like, three different time periods. Mm. Uh, I feel like they were being lazy with the character design and, again, to gore. And Deadhouse uh, said something about that, too. Like, it's hard not to like Christian Bale, but, yeah, they dropped the ball. Like, he could have been wild if he actually got into the realm of gods. Uh, And then Dylan goes on to say, I see nods to the source material, such as the head tattoos for the head tentacle. Um... Uh, he's referring to gore there. But oh, I'm not yeah. sure how to simplify that. <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's right. Um, they clearly read the comics, or someone did, at least doing the effects or something, but they just didn't really make use of it. Um, Dylan was saying Rachel's 21. Yeah, though I'm sure all the actors are young adults. I think it's more of how we're treating this in story, and it all feels profoundly unnecessary to me. <laughs> it was just that forced love interest bit where we're like, yeah. oh, there's these people the same age. I get that he had a crush on her in the beginning. We could have just left it there, I think, though, you know? Like, Why okay, is now there... we're besties, but you're 6,000 years old, and I'm 16, 17. Why know? is there movies these days just opt out of that romance entirely? Yeah. There like... wasn't, like, a ton of romance in Wakanda Forever. There was... I think the real romantic thread was the, the child and that uh, T'Challa had with that uh, woman. Mm-hmm. Like, Lupita. That is Lupita, right? Or am yeah, I Yeah, I think it was Lupita Nyong'o, yeah. I, <laughs> um, but I, I forget her character's name. Me too. But everyone knows what we're we talking about. We know who we're talking about, exactly. So yeah. that was, like, the romantic thread, and I think like, sometimes that's all you need, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And the I movie has so much kiss. more heart than anything, like, that oh, we've seen recently. <sighs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Did you have any questions or anything, dear? Oh, it was the um, Peter. Oh, Nakia is her name. Oh, Nakia. there we go. <laughs> Always great at pronouncing yeah, I'm things. I'm trying to think if I had any questions at or all. Or thoughts or anything. <laughs> um, 
The oh, I will say the thing I found like Mr. Mime and Savannah very disappointing that we didn't bring it up that it was just another end credit scene after I thought they did a pretty good job it didn't design. go anywhere. Yeah, like they did a pretty good job designing Mr. Mime. He's a fun little villain and it could have been done really well. Mm -hmm. And instead it's just like, eh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would have been nice if we had seen the I loved the caterpillar. I thought that was funny. That whole bit, but then he just went, Oh, haha, I'm leaving actually. Uh, I'm yes. gonna go do something this else. This is a big feature of the game, is and I'm like, Okay, so oh, that's fine. So he's been chilling for two years in prison. <laughs> Mr. Mime comes back, you know, he's like, Oh, yeah, we got something in the works, and then he leaves again. But that's essentially the exact same place that we left it at the last movie, was it not? Yeah. That we introduced that character. It's, it's the same scene. And it's implied <laughs> and that And it's we're kind doing of the something. joke, but it's that doesn't defend it. No, I'm like, we need to add something here. Are you breaking him out? Is there maybe a little hint of what maybe is to come? But you're Or if they were they should have just been somewhere else again. doing something else. Yeah. Like kind of having already escaped and they're like in the middle of a scheme. If you really are going that route. But uh, apparently the director was saying that he uh he kind of wanted them to be behind the God's Realm being breached, but it just added too many layers to an already long two-hour movie, and that was just something that he had to compromise away. And it gets but into... we already had one cut, one after credit scene, so then just don't have two. It gets if into you're already my, saying it's uh, too long, like it gets into my central thesis of like w this movie was just compromised away. Mm. Um, like Wonder Woman getting down with that dude Steve was inhabiting in her movie. Just don't do it. LOL. That's a great point on two levels. Yeah, yeah that is yeah, uh, same energy as same, that. Same energy for mm -hmm. sure. But also, um, it's, it's something that comes up a lot in writing, especially just these days in critiques of like, there's nothing in, in the writing, in the source material, any of that, that suggests you should do that <laughs> no one told the writers to do that or if they did like that's on the studio like no fan wants that it's not ex an expected story convention no that's just you you invented this scenario where something seedy like that has to happen mm -hmm. and it is unnecessary now watch me smash this guy's space rocks. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> no, you're right, though. It's not like It or something where, like, it, Stephen yep. King's written this whole bit where there has to be this that's weird a beautiful point, child yeah. orgy, you know? And we're like, okay, well, we got to reference this somehow, and maybe it's even relevant in the plot. Because even then, yeah. they managed to I was going to say, even then, I don't think that. any adaptation is done so. No, exactly. But you could understand why they would do it, at least. Right, if it's this unavoidable part in the history of, you know, the canon of the whatever then okay, I get that. But it really just didn't add anything except making me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Now, you guys, I was complaining about the art direction of this game, and I stand by that. But I will say, I forgot how, like, intricate the actual gameplay is and, like, the amount of layers to this combat. And those, like, little bars at the bottom do, like, three different things. And, I like, I'm not even using it right entirely, like, because there's extra controls and not getting right. And... You, that's why I'm, my butt's getting kicked over and over. I'm just I'm unfamiliar with all the mechanics, but I do appreciate that about even the first Injustice game. <laughs> Did you see he flipped me off there too? They just blur oh, it out. Funny. Lobo's a really fun character, and they want uh, the guy who plays Aquaman to play him. And look at this guy and tell me that's not Aquaman. Like, <laughs> yeah, I could totally see or, that. What's Kinda the actor's looks like name? Jason I, Momoa. Yeah, like tell me that's not like the perfect role for Jason Momoa to play. So James Gunn is I can totally see that, yeah. Yeah, right? Like, that's awesome. He's actually a better Lobo than Aquaman, for sure. Mm. Um, but this no, is an interesting point. thought. Um, but maybe we'll leave it there. That is, like, an hour, and you're asking how long. And I was like, well, we'll probably go about that. And I think we, we've kind of... I feel like we've touched on everything we we're We're repeating about, ourselves yeah. a little Unless bit. Unless anybody has any questions. Um, Dead House is saying, the only costume I really hate in these games is Superman's. You know, I, I okay, when I say the art style is a little dated, I don't necessarily mean I, I dislike the costumes or anything. It's just, you know, it's a little, it's just not exactly what we go through today. And, you know, I do appreciate how, like, this ultimate version I have has, like, look at this, eight different Superman costumes or something wow. like that. And some of them are cool. Like, um, some of, like, Superman's, uh, a regime costume is or whatever but like i love that we have a cool ass uh recreation of cyborg superman and stuff like that that is fun because that's obviously a relatively obscure character and a pretty goofy design but he looks great <laughs> and they did it <laughs> um 
Yeah, and so, like, Injustice is a gem. I picked it for a reason, and uh, it was just fun to have in the background. At some point, this is the kind of game where I do think we're going to play through the story together, but it would be us focusing on the story as opposed to now, where it's just here to have some background noise and have, uh, well, what was a glimmer of Shazam, but I got kind of bored of playing him <laughs> um, as, yeah. after a while. Um, so now it's Superman versus Lobo, but uh, it's funny. Anytime I change characters, I always do much better. <laughs> um, it is possible I can actually beat this little classic mode too, uh, but uh, maybe we'll we'll call it here after this match or something. I'm trying to think if I had any questions for you, but I feel like I might have preempted that at the beginning, just yeah. going over some of the things. Do you have any questions about this game? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't think so. You did pretty good with the combos. The thing that you were struggling with after a while is you just have to. And I don't like it about this game. You have to have, like, crazy quack timing. Like, I basically do the whole combo. Totally. I felt like I was going pretty quick. Like, but... watch my hands, and I'll do the whole combo, and then the character does it on the screen. Like, it's, it's like, well, it's practically that speed. I do like this wager system, though. It's yeah. really fun. And I'm not used to anything except Wii remotes, so it's not... That doesn't help either. I'm not going to be all that fast with it. Cyborg Superman wins. It even specifies that I'm this character. Like, he looks great. That's exactly what the crazy comic book version is. And oh, he's like a super fine. villain. That kind of almost looks like a bit of a nod to Steve Harvey. Yeah. With the half face thing. Um, Wait, is it Steve Harvey or Harvey Dent? Harvey is Dent. Steve Harvey's the dude who I was, hosts that game show. <laughs> I was like, I, I was trying to place it. It's like, that's not who no, you mean. No, that's Harvey Dent. Oops, 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 oops. All right, and then the final boss of this game is always Superman because of the plot of the story. <laughs> uh, I don't want to give that away because they do introduce it and explain it pretty well in the Injustice game, but mm. uh, it's interesting, and it actually like really does something cool with Shazam, so we will have to revisit this one day. And it's not a bad game. So where do you think they're going to take Shazam now? I think this character will be forgotten about for a decade until they figure something out for him. Great. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> that's where I was getting at about like the lack of a plan worries me. Because that usually, if they don't have a plan and they don't have anything announced, usually that means the kid, like is just going to sit in development hell. Well, they didn't really hint at anything either. Like We that's just had true. our bit. There's no tying it into other characters that have been introduced, like Black Adam. We're just... Oh He's God. just floating Superman's around with no again. context of other characters. I don't think he plays... Oh, he does play like that. Okay. One cool thing I actually do appreciate is some of these characters that return to Injustice 2, they didn't actually change them too much. And the nice thing about that is there's a certain feeling of continuity. Like, they just play a little better <laughs> as opposed to completely reworking them. Um, but I'm still getting my butt kicked. Again. <laughs> oh, um... Okay. Well, I can't see right now, but... <laughs> I don't know how... So Deadhouse says, I don't know how excited for Lobo I am. He gets a little annoying after a while. He's a lot like Deadpool, where... Um, and and then Deadhouse agrees that uh, he's likely to get shelved. With the Shazam, that is. Um, but I was going to say, Lobo's a bit like Deadpool, where you definitely don't want to overplay that card. Well, I lose. At least I get knocked through the Fortress of Solitude for a little bit. Oh, that's fine. We love it of solitude it's a fun area and there's two settings to see all these like creatures in these little exhibits here and stuff it, it's a fun it's a fun course mm. the uh the courses in this game are amazing like the, the stages you knock people through them and there's so many details to them uh harvey dent i think does show up in one of them in arkham asylum uh but i i agree with dead house like i just i think well he's agreeing with me but uh, I just need to put my fate, my hands of fate in the Shazam gods, let them pick a character for me, and defeat this final final boss. We can do it. Raven, you can do it. I don't like Raven much in this game, unfortunately. Oh, no. She's a great character, but just in this uh, game, I'm not good at her. I think mean, like, it's just a technical character that I never bothered to learn. <laughs> mm. I also don't like her voice much. Um, maybe I just got spoiled on this... Tara Strong plays her in the cartoons and stuff, and she just kind of does this gothy voice that I think is perfect for the character, whereas here her voice is demonic. You can't hear it, unfortunately. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Raven's um, definitely supposed to be goth and apathetic. That's not... She's yeah. not supposed to be demonic. It's like, uh, it's distorted. 
Um, oh, weird. No, yeah. I need her to sigh every other word. Be so over it, you know? Yeah, like it kind of fits in this story a bit where like she's part of this corrupted world kind of thing, but it's mm. it's no good. It's it's disappointing. <laughs> no, we don't like and this is the regular version of Raven I'm playing. So if there was a difference in the voices, that would be fine. Because then you have like a cool, oh, this is the evil Raven, and she talks like an evil person. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to beat Superman. Yeah, like Nega Raven or something. Also over here, do you see this pod right behind Raven? Do you recognize that? That's uh... the craft Superman came in. Oh, interesting. Oh, that pot. I thought you meant... Like baby Superman. <laughs> and he just smashed it to defeat me. Little globe of Metropolis or whatever we're Oh, that there. is uh, Kandor. That's a whole other thing. Oh, okay. Another cool reference, though. That's a city in there, is I think the idea. Oh. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Bottle City Kandor. You can also smash that in this game. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't know if I can beat Superman. He's kind of hard. They, they ramp up the difficulty over time, and I'm not... I'm not myself in this game. I'm not my, I used to be able to play this game. I remember kind of liking Batgirl. Maybe she can do it. <laughs> do you have to beat him? No. <laughs> it would just be a nice ending. Okay. <laughs> um, to the stream. But we'll see. We'll do one more and see how this goes. Okay. I ha it's not like I've been that close, so I'm not exactly super feeling it but last time i just picked a random character so maybe this time if i pick someone i'm at least somewhat familiar and comfortable with it'll go great so what's the next dc movie that comes out oh that's a good question because the next mo comic book movie is guardians of the galaxy yeah yeah i think the next dc movie is the flash and then after that at christmas is uh, aquaman 2 and is the flash the one where um batman's also coming back is that um, the same one, or was that a different movie? The Flash is... Yeah, two Batmans are coming back. It's very Two strange. of them in the same one? Yeah. You're so gonna it's have Michael Keaton and... and uh, ben Affleck, Affleck seems... So here's what's going to happen. Even though I haven't seen the movie, I know. Um, <laughs> they're going to start with regular Ben Affleck Batman. And he's going to be like, Hey, Flash, we know each other from the Justice League movie. Do you remember me? And he's going to be like, Yeah, I remember you. We're friends. And then, and then the Flash is going to do something to affect the timeline. I, I, I have a pretty good idea of what, but I won't give that away. Um, and like anyone who's seen the, like Flash comics will know. But like, he's going to do the thing that we all know. He's going to make Flashpoint, and then he's going to change the timeline, and then it's going to be a different Batman. Ew, I possibly, see. So they're doing a whole multiverse yeah. moment as possibly well. Possibly with uh, Michael Keaton playing uh, Thomas Wayne, which is pretty cool. So Thomas Wayne would be... What if Bruce was gunned down in, in the alley as a little boy and Thomas became Batman? Which I think is pretty cool. All right, she's got to use her thing in the air. I'm going to get you, Superman. God. Oh, it did work. Yes. This is a good oh, sign. Oh, there you go. I'm going to fling him down. Oh, Woo! boy. Oh. Stilettos. <laughs> Love that. Superman is a huge bully in this game. Ah, oh, well, he's going to recover some help doing this. And I this. haven't even seen Aquaman yet, either. I didn't the see movie? any of that. The movie? Oh, yeah, we'll no. have to show it to you. It's not terrible. It's by James Wan, which is really interesting, because he's a horror director. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, he's like the Conjuring director and stuff. I didn't know that. And Final Destination, which is how I know him. I did it! Get out of here, Superman! Go to the Forbidden Zone! Oh, You're not welcome in this universe anymore! Uh, oh, oh, all these things, <laughs> all these spoilers flashing by. <laughs> I don't think yet you weren't looking up, so you're good. <laughs> uh, Deadhouse says, where it is Aquaman is a big mess. That's a shame. They were going to do a, um, uh, uh, an Aquaman spinoff movie about the trench, which won't mean anything to you, but it just shows how wild and unplanned they are. Ah, so not all heroes were destroyed by Superman. Some were actually created by him. This is Barbara Gordon's ending, you see. Oh. Uh, the technology wizard, Barbara Gordon, had eluded detection by one Earth intelligence, feeding information to the insurgency under the code name Oracle. I haven't actually gotten her ending yet, so that's fun too. But after the regime's murder of her father, Gotham Police Commissioner James Gordon, Barbara channeled her anger into a new alter ego. Um, this is just the origins of... Batgirl in this story, I guess. Sensing the right opportunity to strike, she attacks Superman directly. By defeating the High Counselor, she announced Batgirl to the world in an impressive fashion. We did it. Wow. I had to change characters like five times, but we did do it. There you Roll go. credits. Alright. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this stream, dear. 
Well, you're welcome. That was fun. Uh, Dead has to stand Bob's the best girl. She's one of my favorite characters in this game uh, because of her aerials and the ability to like just grab people like that and stuff. Uh, I, I love her. She's a DLC character, but she's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I think um, Ace is saying, I heard no pun intended that they are doing a lot of reshoots to the film to eliminate Amber Heard's role. Oh, of course. Oh, boy. <laughs> what a mess. So I don't blame James Gunn for just wanting to wash his hands of the whole thing and just being done with the whole process because it is messy. <laughs> like, it just it feels like a messy, messy uh, situation for DC. And I really do hope they can turn it around because Marvel's also not in a great place. Um, but we'll let you guys know what we think of the other comic book movies. And I was just saying to Sabrina before we were streaming that I want to get them more involved in uh, these the, these streams and doing some stuff and uh, maybe trying out some games, maybe uh, starting... I want to take you through my game history and maybe you can go through mine because there isn't a lot of overlap between us. Like, y your childhood games are stuff like... Uh, uh, Skyward Sword or Twilight Princess if I'm not mistaken and, um, I haven't played a lot of those games <laughs> so it's an interesting combination mm, Okay. I can do like a show and tell thing and I got other plans too but uh, I think that's about it uh, we're about ready to move on so thanks for joining us everybody and we'll see you next time here on Comic Island and I want to just end it